Luckily, you're the author of the Hunter Heartbeat Method. Can you tell us how it all started? Goodness, I can. Uh, so I'm an actor and a director, and I was at the Royal Shakespeare Company mm -hmm. just about 20 years ago, mm -hmm. playing very big roles on big stages in front of huge amounts of uh, people. Mm -hmm. But I felt there was something missing mm -hmm. in what I could reach for with Shakespeare. And I wanted to seek what would happen if I took Shakespeare out of a theatre okay. and took it to people who didn't have any access to the arts. Mm. That's the first thing yeah. I did. But why Shakespeare? He seems to be uh, really complex and mm. so rich in meanings. Mm. Weren't you a bit afraid that it might be too difficult for uh, the audience to, to understand? No because human beings are complex mm -hmm. and we're rich in meaning. Mm -hmm. And when a child is born, a child is complex and rich in meaning. Mm -hmm. And Shakespeare reflects that. Mm -hmm. So yes, Shakespeare's language in its full entirety can seem quite sophisticated and challenging, but I'm a firm believer that we're all unique and complex mm -hmm. beings. Mm -hmm. Nobody thinks of themselves as less than anybody else, or yeah, that's less true. complicated. Absolutely. Human beings are always saying, I'm so complicated. Mm -hmm. So Shakespeare reflects that. Okay. And um, can you tell us a bit more about the Hunter Heartbeat Method? Mm -hmm. what, what is it about? So, well, the history of it is that I left the Royal Shakespeare Company and went and worked in a special school. And I wanted to work with people who had no access to the arts and bring Shakespeare to them. And I was told I could work with anybody mm -hmm. except for the autistic children mm -hmm. because they wouldn't be able to play mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. They literally said there's a door there and they work behind there, but you can't go in. Mm -hmm. So it was a kind of challenge. Yes, it was an immediate challenge and I wanted to get behind the door mm -hmm. and see what on earth was mm -hmm. there. Uh, because my hunch was that everybody could access their feelings, which is what Shakespeare does. Mm -hmm. So finally, because I was uh, nagging them, mm -hmm. they let me play mm -hmm. with the children. And what I discovered straight away was the power of the heartbeat, which is the rhythm that Shakespeare writes his language with, sure. was as strong for the children as it was for me. Mm -hmm. As an actor on stage, I really felt the power of Shakespeare's heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And sitting in a circle with the children, everybody has a heartbeat. Yeah, sure. And the rhythm of everyone's heartbeat mm -hmm. is, when regular, the same. Mm -hmm. So there was an immediate connection, a conversation of the soul, as it were, mm -hmm. whereby That's children beautiful. who didn't have to speak, if they struggled with language, they could actually speak through the different rhythms that we could make of our heartbeats. So we began to sit in circles, make the rhythm of heartbeats, and then practice faces, practice mm -hmm. making different mm -hmm. faces because people on the spectrum find it so difficult to recognise different faces and to make faces themselves. But you have to be pretty consistent, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so what, what it looks like while you work with, let's say, highly functioning children mm -hmm. on autistic spectrum or those who are nonverbal, does it mm -hmm. differ? It does and it doesn't. Patience and love mm -hmm. are in the same amount. 100% mm -hmm. patience, 100% love is required for this work. In that first class that I taught, mm -hmm. there were 12 children and four of them were non-verbal. They never spoke. And four of them never stopped speaking. <laughs> <laughs> and then four of them okay. were in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I started working with the, with the broadest group that you can have. And so everything that I invented can be adapted for those four who don't speak and those four who do and for the four in the middle. There's no point in making a game or an exercise just for the kids who do speak sure. or just for those ones over there. Everything has to be adapted mm -hmm. to accommodate all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that way, I learned how to create sensory games for everybody on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And really the children taught me how to teach them. I didn't know anything about autism before I went and I learnt from them how to have this conversation of the soul, how to communicate feelings, complex, rich in meaning feelings without language, but through Shakespeare's 
interest in the eyes and the mind. Mm -hmm. So it means you had to be a very good listener and observer, right? Yes. Um, has anything gone wrong? I mean, has, uh, were, they, were there times where you didn't expect something to happen and it mm. did? That's a fantastically good question because I, through this work, I've understood for myself that there's no such thing as wrong. Mm -hmm. And that in education and in life, if you divide things up between right and wrong, mm -hmm. then you set children up to fail and you set yourself up, up to fail as a teacher mm -hmm. or as an educator or an actor. But I don't really feel that about life as a person. So I brought what I feel about life as a person into these rooms. And really, if you believe that nothing can go wrong, then you are really sharing what it feels like to be alive Absolutely. with a group of people. Absolutely. And it's not really about right yeah. or wrong. It's so like it's not about giving marks at no. school. It's like appreciating the effort yes. a child Yes, and even into. though it's, I'm with children, I don't really believe this is educational. I think it's spiritual. There is a, there is a sharing of what it feels like to be alive. Mm -hmm. And in that, the children become educated and so do we as adults because we should never stop being educated in the broadest sense which is being educated about each other and about accepting each other as individuals and and that everybody has a common yeah it's, it's like always learning yes. yeah it's like always learning right uh, you're the founder of the flute theatre mm -hmm. right yes. so uh, what does the work look like mm. uh, you come to the theatre you've got your own group of actors yes. you've got the children okay yes. uh, what do the rehearsals look like well another great question so our rehearsals for this work are a little bit eccentric mm -hmm. because if children aren't with us when we're playing the games mm -hmm. we play them with each other mm -hmm. but what's really interesting is without autism in the room mm -hmm. the work that I've created has no meaning we need something to push against. Mm -hmm. And the push is the autistic young person's struggle with exploring their feelings. Mm -hmm. And these games and our work with Flute Theatre push against that struggle and let the transformation happen. So the rehearsals are very humorous and very loving and very kind, where we practice what we will do with the children. But recently what we've been doing is bringing children into our rehearsals, which is really pleasurable. And, and can anybody come? Of course. Of course. Yeah. Right. Everybody's and how about welcome. the parents? Do they accompany the children? Yes, we've got to know a, a few families, mm -hmm. and one in particular, uh, a family called the Shaughnessy family over in England. Mm -hmm. They have a son called Gabriel, who's 18, mm -hmm. who's now been coming to our rehearsals uh, for the last couple of years and he really? attends performances and he knows us so well so he sees us and he immediately starts making the heartbeats even though he's a non-verbal person and he knows all of our names and he likes to have his photograph taken with every single oh, one of us really? every single time he comes <laughs> That's we have all these lovely routines yeah. but what's, what's really important for me is I keep learning about mm -hmm. autism and through Gabriel mm -hmm. and through his engagement with mm -hmm. these rehearsals I can keep making the work better and better and I can keep refining it and make new games. Mm -hmm. So it's never finished. I feel like I'm just at the tip of the iceberg. I've been doing it for a long time but, but I've, I will never know enough mm -hmm. because that would be like saying I know everything about human beings. Uh, we've been talking before and you said um, you can clearly see travelling from country to country that there is a kind of different approach to autism to the children on autism spectrum. Yes. Uh, do you think some nations tend to be more laid back uh, while approaching the children as some are just reserved. I have really observed uh -huh. that. I mm -hmm. have. I've worked uh, a lot. I've been privileged to work in Spain and in Barcelona, in, in mm -hmm. Catalonia, and especially in in Barcelona, the Catalan people mm -hmm. are so ready to physically embrace each other and the children. Uh, it seems in their culture that they literally have each other's backs. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and they are not afraid in that rather Mediterranean way to be very, very expressive. I think in another life I was probably a Catalan person <laughs> because the work I've created is so physical. It's not just about the speaking, it's absolutely about being in your body. We cuddle the children, we hold them. Um, so I found in Barcelona that they were the only group of, children, of, sorry, of adults who uh -huh. never said, is it okay to touch the children? That's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. Right, I've been, I've been wondering mm. because it can be a some, you know, big issue. It's here. a huge issue nearly everywhere you go in the world, right. except Barcelona, <laughs> where yeah. these actors just got hold of the children and gave them cuddles. And the special schools mm -hmm. that I visited in Barcelona were the same thing. It wasn't just in the theatre. We, we were privileged to go to a particular special school and the children there, they still have autism. They have all of the struggles and the communication problems that anyone with autism has. But the attitude towards them from the parents and the school and the teachers is pretty different. There's, there's no fear at all. They just are the same. And physically, that is expressed in a way that I would like to. I, I get into trouble sometimes because in some other countries, in some places, they really teach you well, well, hands off. It. They uh -huh. teach you okay. just don't go anywhere near a child. And I'm not like that. Mm -hmm. Now that's not to say that if a child clearly is uncomfortable, mm -hmm. that, you would, that you would make them feel more yeah. uncomfortable. Of course not. Mm -hmm. But there's a love and a generosity that if you give that initially as the adult, you'll learn what the child needs. Yeah. What you helped me to see is um, that there is also somebody very important involved in the whole story, that is parents. Yes. How parents react to the children, to see their children perform and perhaps uh, overcome some obstacles they previously um, had. Yes, I've more recently been very, very engaged with the journey that the parents are making. Mm -hmm. For so long I've been concentrating on the relationship between the actor and the child. Mm -hmm. And that's something I really understand, or I'm beginning to understand rather. But what I've really looked at now is the effect that that's having on the whole family, the parents and the siblings yeah. who also come. Yeah. So for a parent to have a child at about two years old suddenly demonstrate all these problems and then the medical profession either telling you there's something wrong or keeping something from you, all this stress and anxiety that is focused on your baby, on your child, it is going to shape a family in a certain way. Absolutely. Some families cope incredibly and they just they just weather it and have the, all the love in the world and they don't mind about the rest of the world. Most families have some level of anxiety that stays and some uh, that is families understandable. have right. huge amounts of anxiety. So our, one of the barriers that, that we find is actually encouraging the families to come to the workshops and to the performances because they're frightened that their child will be the one that spoils it. Ah, oh, really? Yes, and they say to us, we, we don't want to come because we've been out before and our child had a tantrum and then everyone looked at us and we had to leave and the shame and anxiety just builds up. And yeah, you told me a wonderful story about the cover yes. of your book, the book yes. you wrote about Shakespeare's heartbeat, your, your method. Can you tell us yes, the story that? So the, the book cover shows us playing our games mm -hmm. and here is a little boy called Matthew mm -hmm. and he's playing with this actor here mm -hmm. and here is his mother but Matthew didn't know that she was there because she was so worried that if he saw her mm -hmm. he would stop. Mm -hmm. She had never seen him play let alone stand up at the Royal Shakespeare Company in front of all these people and speak Shakespeare and play these games. He's a pretty non-verbal child who normally just used to sit in the corner. And that's who she knew her son was. So when she saw this, she was crying her eyes out. She was absolutely just couldn't believe what she was seeing. And for her, it, it changed her life because she saw the potential in her child. 
and she would never see him the same again. She saw this positive, amazing, funny mm -hmm. child mm -hmm. who was being a little bit naughty, like yeah. all children <laughs> should be, <laughs> be, and being a bit funny and a bit and 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 getting everyone to laugh. And she didn't think her child could do that. So for me, that opportunity for the parent to see the child in a positive, loving, mm -hmm. affirmative, uh, creative way mm -hmm. is life changing. Mm -hmm. And this was taken nearly 10 years ago now. And I, I keep in touch with this family. And the, the, she always talks about this day as, the, Does she? as this turning point mm -hmm. for her, mm -hmm. for understanding that she knew that there was a whole person inside her son who seemed locked away. She knew because she's his mother. she needed help to, yeah. to see it clearly. For her to see that and for, for her to see everybody else see that. Someone with autism has a full landscape of feelings just as you or I do. Mm -hmm. There is no difference in how much they can feel. The struggle is that the feelings can't be communicated easily. Mm -hmm. And so drama and these games helps that communication. It unlocks the channel for communication. Mm -hmm. And then the child can be known by the actors and crucially their own family. That's a lovely story. I, I read one comment, one mom commenting on uh, autism and she said, A for me with capital A is for autism, which means I accept mm. my child wholly. Yes. But I guess there is, um, like it's it's obvious you love your your child right yeah. but you need a little bit appreciation you need to appreciate your child yes. and that's a great story and that's a great thing you've been doing thank you to help parents appreciate and love their own children more mm. and i'm so happy to have a chance to speak to you and for you to come here I do hope that is not only Ohio State University who mm. can be doing this long-term project. Mm. Perhaps one day we'll engage in something like that. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>